everyone, welcome to another KSP Interstellar tutorial. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on the Alcubierre drive. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Anyways, you know what I'm trying to say. So, of course, the whole mod is pretty much based off this uh, part or object or item. And uh, this, of course, allows you to travel the speed of light, allows you to travel great distances, and with pretty much very little, little effort. The only thing, you can't activate this in the atmosphere. You have to get out of the atmosphere. So, which is pretty funny. In technical terms, I didn't bother to test it out yet, but if that is the case, then you could literally start it off on the surface of the moon or any other planet or moon or asteroid that doesn't have an atmosphere, which is pretty cool. I presume that, technically speaking, that should be possible as long as it doesn't have an atmosphere. So the Alcubierre drive is actually pretty simple. It requires energy. You need to produce 1,000 uh, 1, units of energy to produce one of the exotic matters, or 1 gigawatt of power, I presume, to produce uh, one, uh, 1 unit of exotic matter. That's all this Alcubierre drive requires. So why don't we just make up something a very quick, uh, a very quick system. So we're gonna have this. We are then gonna throw in, let's say, uh, let's throw in a procedural tank. No, no, no. Where are we? Procedural parts. Uh, nope. Uh, yeah. Let's throw in a tank. Yeah. And then uh, let's make it actually a little bit bigger. And then we can throw in uh, our Alcubierre drive, wherever the hell it is. It is here, small one, so let's chuck that in there, we have our tank there, and then of course we need our engine, our engine which is here, we're going to put on a nice plasma engine at the top, and because plasma engine produces heat, and the Alcubierre drive as well I presume produces heat, we are going to need to be able to dissipate the heat. So, this is pretty much uh, all you need. You have a ship with an engine, and uh, that's it. Ah, oh, yeah, wait a moment, hold on, we do need the power. And because I have a huge power network all around the place, I can use this. If you don't have a power network, what you can use is any reactor with an electric generator. Remember the heat that comes out of this goes into the generator, and the generator, electric generator produces electricity. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my reactors tutorial. So, that being said, I pretty much have everything I need. I got my power in, which means that these guys, this little drive, can produce all the exotic matter it needs. And then, of course, I have my radiators to be able to radiate the heat from my plasma, uh, plasma thruster. Again, this is something I actually never bothered to check, but I presume the Alcubierre drive shouldn't produce any heat. So, that being said, you got the basic things needed. So, now we're going to start it up. And you see that I have exotic matter, zero. So what I'm going to do is switch on my receiver, and I got plenty of power. And of course, I got quite a lot of power, and you see the exotic matter is going up very, very, very quickly. I have uh, quite a nice amount of power, I think 143 gigawatts of power. And uh, it's, it's, it's not bad at all. Hold on, let's take a look here. Yeah, 143 gigawatts of power. Technically, if I'm out of space, from all the things, I should be able to receive 230 gigawatts of power. One gigawatt of power produces one unit, so you can see it is churning up pretty, pretty quickly. So, now, a few other things you should know in terms of this drive. When you right-click the drive, you can stop the charging, which stops the charging, in case you're running out of power for some odd forsaken reason. And then you can start charging to continue and activate the drive. Of course, you can activate it, but of course, because I am in the atmosphere, it won't allow me. And then the warp speed. Now, this is actually pretty cool. When you click plus, 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 you see that the uh, light speed factor increases. I think it goes all the way up to 20, right? And you'll notice... As you're increasing the speed, if the status is ready, if you have enough power to go at that speed of light speed, it says it's ready. So in case you want to go at a very quick speed, I'm at 3C, whatever the hell that's supposed to mean, whatever, five times the speed of light, I guess. And I presume so. It's just faster. Yeah, as you notice, 15, so-called speed of light, I guess. As you see, I don't have still enough power for it. It's still, it's still charging for this type of speed. And if I want to go the fastest, I'm still only at 70%. So, of course, the faster amount of speed, it requires more exotic matter. And again, the more weight you have, the bigger the ship you have, also requires more exotic power, more exotic matter to be able to push that ship. So, this is pretty cool. So, what I'm going to do is we're going to pick the, uh, just to show you an example of how cool this is, we are going to pick the furthest thing that we could possibly go to. Set as target. I want to get a nice big full charge. 
And it's actually, it's funny, it's, it's right there. It's right on our tra trajectory if we're going straight up. So that's pretty cool. Exotic matter is nearly there. Let's crank it up a bit. Uh, exotic matter is there, so. I presume it has taken uh, one megajoule or some crap like that. No, 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 no. It's taken uh, 1,000 units of electric charge to be able to produce uh, one exotic matter. So one gigawatt, yeah. So here we go. Let's crank this up. If you want to know more about my plasma, please check out my plasma tutorial. And off we go. We are, of course, heading off. I am still keeping my, uh, of course, antenna on. And as you notice, my power is going up because I'm getting closer to my relays. But again, that's in a different tutorial. Uh, let's switch on my SAS. And actually, there's no there's no need to point it exactly at our target since our target's very, very far away already. Hold on. I do believe we do need to go at a little bit of a 90 degree angle since our uh, satellites are at the 90 degree angle. So we do want to keep the power. Once I exceed the 37,000 meters and I'm in space, I can activate the drive. 25 34, 36, 37 orbit. So I cut my power. I can switch this off so I don't have to overheat for no reason. And now all I have to do is aim my ship at my target, which is far, far, far away. Make sure it's balanced, make sure I have it on full, and activate warp drive. Now look at the speed of this thing. It's absolutely crazy. Let's uh, zoom in. <laughs> and that was just a few seconds. Look how fast it's going. And we are actually heading towards our target very, very, very soon. So I don't even think, no. I haven't. It's, it's actually pretty funny. So of course, the further we go, if you noticed, it actually did consume... Uh, the uh, 15,000 uh, units of uh, mass, exotic mass that is, and uh, we are going to see the trajectory that we're going in, it's, it's just insane, it's really insane. And uh, the cool thing is, I don't think we can control it, no we can not control it from here. Yeah, so what we can do is from here we can actually still control the ship and try to keep it on target as much as possible. So, technically speaking, as you did see, it did take 15,000 units of uh, the, uh, the uh, exotic mass, and we are, of course, getting closer and closer. Now, the disadvantage with this is because I don't have anything on board in terms of electric generators. So, because I'm very, very far, you'll notice that my receiver, I was making around 230 gigawatts when I was at Kerbal. Now, I'll pretty much be making a couple of megawatts, which is really a joke. So it's really nothing in comparison. Let's just speed things up to get a little bit closer. You can move and turn, but I noticed it doesn't really move as quickly as, as you think it does. So for some reason, I'm not sure if that's actually the, the, the best thing or not. But what I did, what I can do is as I get closer, which I should be getting close, Ah, I passed the damn thing. I should switch it off now. Stop. Deactivate warp drive. So there we go. Now I should spin around. Because I still have my actual thing on target. And I can activate my warp drive again. But the disadvantage with that is that I have to charge up. And because I don't have any nuclear reactors on board, if I'm going to switch on my receiver, you'll see that I'm making very little 70 megawatts. And if I actually target my sweetest home planet, set as target, and I move to face my home planet, I get only 82 megawatts. So you can imagine how long it'll take to get the exotic matter 
to, to to get the 82 megawatts so yeah it's it's a long 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 time but with 3000 units uh, 3000 units of exotic mass i think i could shoot off one more but at a much much slower speed so let's try to let's try to target again set as target here i'm just messing about i think you pretty much did understand in terms of how the uh, exotic matter works and i'm gonna face face where the planet is and because i don't have enough i only got 19 percent let's see what i can shoot off five four i can do a three so i'm i'm pretty satisfied with that let's let's do a three activate warp drive and now we're hopefully getting closer to to where i want to go are we actually going through the planet that'll be funny Again, it is long distances, so something for you that you'll say like, "Ah, oh, yeah, but how come? And it takes, of course, much longer now. Even though light speed is still light speed, though, so it's still... I do believe we should disable, goddammit, no! Deactivate. So where is it? Set as target. We should be able to see it now, I presume. Somewhere in the distance beyond. I think we're still too damn far. So I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. And of course, because I'm making so little power, I don't even have one gigawatt. I can't even generate one unit of exotic mass. This is one disadvantage with the build that I have. So generally, I would recommend you guys to put on at least a thermal reactor with an electric generator to be able to give you that one gigawatt of power. So you can travel around in space and take your time and, and, and play around with it a little bit more. Again, this is the basic tutorial. I will make a more advanced one in terms of how you can use it to get to planets and as well how you can be more efficient with this without using so much fuel to actually break the speed that you have because you do get, gain a lot of speed that you still have to kill or delta V that you have to kill with it. As always, happy gaming and take care. Bye.